want to say uh, welcome to this is to the Design 570 class. Uh, I am here with my very good friend and fantastic photographer and designer Anne Hamersky. Um, we've known each other for a long time, and it has been kind of a delight and a joy to uh, watch Anne's career um, unfold in, in this really rather I I think kind of spectacular way. Uh, Anne has. Uh, brought her expertise as a photographer to the world of sustainable agriculture and in particular into portraying the people behind this very important um, uh, world. And one of the things that I love about Anne's work is not only does she bring this um, incredible expertise uh, and, and kind of a consistency of feel to her work, but you can feel the passion with which um, the, with which you and bring to your work. And that's what I think takes uh, it from um, extraordinary work into being remarkable work. Um, so mm -hmm. it was part of this really cool project that um, I hope mm -hmm. all of you will have seen by the time you view this or will go see uh, shortly afterwards, uh, which is called the, um, the Food Change. Uh, organized by Quesa down at the Ferry Building. And so Anne is going to take us through that project, but I also hope to talk a little bit about uh, your work. Um, just a little bit more, Anne, before we get going, Anne was part of uh, a wonderful collaboration that made this beautiful book, uh, Farm Together Now, in 2010 by Chronicle Books. She's managed uh, social media plat uh, campaigns, um, works in video, uh, and um, is it just an incredible photographer, videographer, editor, designer? Um, that wonderful project on the side of the Mission Pie store in the Mission is another wonderful project. So, um, so with that, I will hand it over to you, Anne. And thank you, thank you so much for being oh, here. Thanks, Josie. I appreciate the chance to talk to your students. Hi, everybody. Um, I wish I could be in the same room with you and, and actually get to know you a little bit. Um, it's hard to not, I'm a people person and you'll see that I, I photograph people and um, shine the light on, on all kinds of people and um, that's my passion. And so I'm sorry, I can't, I can't actually see you. You know, I would like to see you, um, but here we are. and. Thanks, Josie, for the opportunity to um, share about my work. And I'm gonna, should I just share the screen now, Josie, and just start in on my little I think talk, so. my talk? Yeah. Because um, I cover a lot of my, um, my a little bit of my background and, um, and how I got into this and what I, what I love about it and um, some of my projects and then get into the food change. So um, this is my website and my uh, Instagram handle. And I just wanted to say, you know, as you're starting out on your career, be aware of your, what seeds are already inside you that you're passionate about and, um, and who are you and how can you bring that to the world? I just wanted to hopefully inspire in you like that you are, there's nobody else like you and like bring it on, bring it on. That's what the world world wants. And this is the, um, if you've had a chance to go down to the food change, this, you know, you, you, you recognize this, but if you haven't, this is what it looks like from one angle. These are eight foot by eight foot panels. So they're like as big as garage doors, basically. And there's 16 of them under the eaves of the historic ferry building down at the very end of Market Street in San Francisco. So it's an elegant, amazing Beaux-Arts building. And I was really, really deeply honored to, to work on this project. I wanted to give you a little bit of background. I'm originally from Nebraska. And um, again, going back to that, the notion of really pulling from yourself and your store, your own story and who you are and what makes you tick. And um, it took me actually a pretty long time to get back to sort of my roots. I, I um, was inspired by the work of Dorothea Lange back in college. That was before I was a photographer, really. I was a painting student and also an English minor and, and did a lot of broadcast journalism more than, more than print journalism. See, I was a painter, but I, I was really inspired back then by, by Dorothea Lange and also by the work of, um, of Gordon Parks. And Gordon Parks is famous for his phrase, 
choice of weapons. And what it goes back to, he, as a young man, realized that he had a choice of weapons in terms of social justice. And he, instead of choosing a gun, he chose a camera. And that has always really, really stuck with me. I was actually 10 years old when I first heard about Gordon Parks. I was, that was the first photographer I ever heard of. And he really, he's really inspired me throughout my life, as Dorothea Lang has who I'll go back to her, she went out into um, WPA land and um, photographed folks out in the fields and people who were uh, poverty stricken at that time. And lots of, lots, I just was very inspired by both of these photographers' attitudes and work. I'll briefly just say, you know, I became a photographer kind of through the back door as a painter. And I did lots and lots and lots and lots of work for magazines. I was a magazine photojournalist for a really long time, like 30 years or, or something. And I always loved to do people on location and, and always stories that meant something to uh, of ser service in the world. I always called it health education and welfare um, kind of stories. And you know, going back to this notion of your roots and about who you are and what makes you come alive, that is what's going to come alive in the world because you yourself are, are alive. And as designers to follow kind of, you know, it might take a while to find that, but, or maybe you know it now, but it, it took me a little while to get back to sort of my roots in sort of an agrarian agricultural way and to, to mix the two together between agriculture and um, social justice. So anyway, these are, these are just some illustrations of some magazine photojournalism I did over the years that, I was, that, that relate to agriculture and um, all the different wonderful people I've met. This was part of the Farm Together Now project and like where we went in the United States, all these different locations and tons of diversified operations. And I was super honored to work and, and, do, and create work for this book that was published by Chronicle Books and really passionate about composition, really passionate about color, really passionate about gesture, really passionate about personality, really passionate about positive, what I call positive representation. It's really important to me that, that all kinds of people are represented in a very positive way. And that certainly resonates now in, um, in our time and place in history with the Black Lives Matter um, movement, social movement that's like gaining steam. And that's super important to me and has been for a very, very long time. So these are just some images from the, from the Farm Together Now book. This is a, a layout all you designers out there, you know how how the how what that means to to all of us really when things get made real into print and into a book form. And I worked with Amy Franceschini and Daniel Tucker. Maybe some of you uh, as designers know the work of Amy Franceschini in the middle. If you don't look her up, she's legendary. She came up actually with the Twitter logo, and she also does a ton of amazing fine art around the world. Her website is futurefarmers.com. I think it's .com. It might be .org, but futurefarmers, one word. Um, a brilliant person and a wonderful, amazing collaborator. Um, and then I kind of also went on to do more work. I worked for some foundations and um, the, mostly the Cliff Bar Family Foundation, doing again, lots of work in the field with lots of um, underserved populations, uh, Again, really important to me that, uh, that my images had a lot of respect and that people who didn't have a, a loud voice in, in, uh, in the world, that their voices were amplified. It really mattered to me. I started then to get into like public art and this was a project I did. I was funded by the Creative Work Fund and these were breast health, a breast health campaign in the Bayview Hunters Point area of San Francisco and started to kind of get the bug of like public art. So instead of like on the page of a magazine or even on the wall of a gallery, I got really inspired by the notion of public art that like um, the audience the, uh, con the consumer of the, of the design what were random. They were people walking by, people driving by, people in a bus. Um, so this was my first foray into public art. And it was a really great, great project to work with. I continued to work with that same designer, Supernatural Design, 
you can look them up, supernaturaldesign.com. And we did this other project that was funded by the San Francisco Arts Commission Cultural Equity Grant. These were three of the four. These were huge murals on the side of Mission Pi. We had some fun events on the street of unveiling these huge murals that were all about food and farming, bilingual, when do you bake, when, you know, it, it was on the side of a bakery that had a social mission, Mission Pi. They just recently got out of the business there, but they had a social, it was a, it was a bakery with a social mission and, and we did four really fun bilingual murals outside there. And this was, this was one of them. Now it brings me to the food change. And this, Josie, do you want, do you want me, do you want to say anything at this point or just want to keep, should I just um, keep on, on no, dabbing? I think, I think I'll save kind of my questions for the end, but it okay. sounds like you, um, you, you might, talk a little bit about this ongoing relationship with supernatural design. Sure. I'll, um, I can add that in too. Yeah. Um, they, yeah. Cause they, I brought them on this, brought them into this project as well. This was what was existing in the space. This was a project, this was a A to Z of sustainability under the eaves of the ferry building. And it was up there for about 10 years and I always loved it. I just loved it. I, I, as I, like I said, I got into public art and just loved the democratic vibe of it. It was a democracy of, of uh, the audience was, was random and it was free to see these, see the artwork. And so I, I, I like I said before, I was, I was really jazzed about, about continuing with a public art project. And this one always caught my eye and Quesa is a nonprofit. They put on the farmer's market at the ferry building and at Jack London Square and in the mission. And they, and they also do lots of educational projects for youth and teens. And anyway, this is, what, this is what was there before. And after 10 years, they were ready to refresh it. So I brought on Supernatural Design as, you know, my designer of choice since I had a longstanding relationship with them. And this was one of the mood boards that they created in terms of the design discussion about what we wanted it to look and feel like. We wanted it to be really bold and really colorful and really have a natural vibe to the portraits and also have the typography be really integrated into the work itself. So then we went into... I don't know if you wanted any other inference. I mean, I can keep going about that. No, but. I think keep going, but that okay. is such a great start, that mood board, because yeah, it really and, sets mm -hmm. the tone for where you're going. And I think once we see the end result, we'll see, you know, it's, it's really great to see the beginning. Yeah, and, and we had lots of different ideas, but I thought th there were many mood boards, but I thought this one was really kind of, really did relate to how it ended up in a lot of ways with re the really bold type. And, and in terms of the process at this point, and Supernatural was a part of it. I love working with Christy Ricksford. You know, she'd worked with me on the, the Breast Health Transit Shelter Project. Mm -hmm. um, she worked on the Mission Pie Project with me. And I really wanted, of course, I wanted to work with her on this. And so it, it, there was a, an RFP, like a request for proposals from lots of different designers. And I was... I will admit I was crossing my fingers that, that Quesa would pick Christy and Supernatural Design, but it was not up to me. So right. when she made this mood board and she put a lot into it and, and worked, you know, th these are nonprofit, you know, fees we're talking yeah. about. This is not commercial fees. And, and she works for some, you'll, if, when you look at her website, supernaturaldesign.com, you'll see, I mean, she has, she has some really, um, very high tech clients. And so, you know, this was also a labor of love for her. And so the next step, once they chose Christy, uh, Supernatural Design, then we kind of knew we had this square format to work with. And then we needed to kind of develop a look and feel a little bit further with regard to specifically what we were going to do. And so I pulled from my extensive library and came up with images that could translate into squares and that we, we needed to figure out what the heck we were going to do and, and work collaboratively with me in the field and then them at the, on the design board. Like, how are we going to make these ginormous square um, 
images work. And, be, and it sounds like you're also at the point where you're trying to just tease out what the story arc will, it's even before that, and yet it's the images, this look is coming, is, is, is happening almost before that, that story arc is developed? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't include pictures of the meetings that I went to, but like the, non, the nonprofit Quesa, they really, they really brought me in on the ground level with, in terms of content as well. Yeah. And, and I think working with nonprofits is, is really different than working with commercial for-profit clients, because a lot of times with for-profit clients, you know, you are a service provider, you, you're told here's your shot list or here's, you know, the parameters and then come back to us with that. And with this project, it was the opposite of that. It was like sitting in on the meetings, deciding what the topics were going to be, deciding who was going to represent those topics. We knew we had 15 panels. And so we had to come up with 15 distinct topics. This yeah. was an educational project. It was an, it had a educational mission and we didn't know what it was going to look like, but we first yeah. had to start with what were the topics and the topics that we probably had, 30 topics and we had to bring it down to 15 and really figure out which ones had the longest shelf life, which ones would be relevant for a long time because they were planning, they're planning to keep this project up for 10 years. Their last one was 10 years. This is a significant amount of money for a nonprofit to fundraise and then to produce it. It's a significant amount of fundraising for them. So anyway, this is the, these are the kinds of things I would give to Christy at Supernatural. And she came up with various treatments that you can see are kind of related to her mood board using my photographs and then, you know, Photoshopping them into the site specific spot and how would they look? And then we got to kind of discuss, well, which ones worked and which ones didn't. And, you know, there was a discussion about the middle one, which everybody loved, but then did we really want to go with black and white? No, we didn't, even though we loved it right. for treatment of that, but no. And then on the pink one, did we really want to have the background so far, you know, mushed out that you couldn't see mm -hmm. the context of the action? No, we mm -hmm. didn't want to do that. But yes, we wanted to go in this type of very, very bold typography and cr really clear action and, and still very natural gestures of, of the people. So this, this is kind of then at that point, it's like, okay, and we got the topics, we've got the look and feel, you know, now it was time for me to go out into the field and and work with, we had 15 farms to go to this. I'll, I'm going to show you maybe five of them or so. Just real quickly, this was the process. And it, and it always had to fit into a square, you know. So that was the, you know, this was a, uh, a humane uh, livestock grower down in Pescadero. And then we found, then this was the picture that worked. And then it got cropped into a square. And then this became the mural that's the mural. So we had to have space for type. We had to have, and then the coloration, you know, we were able to do, to, to work with Christy and, and then she brought on a junior designer, Natalie Estrada. And they, and so Natalie did most of the production on this, but Christy did kind of, was kind of the senior designer. And then Natalie was the junior designer. This was the second one I'll show you is Joe Skirmer. It's a long story about what he does. All of these people are so noteworthy yeah. and have such great stories and, and offer so much, you know, and so I'm just on the farm with this old, this surfer dude who's like running around in front of me. And finally we, we get him to kind of settle down with us, makes a good <laughs> square. And it's all about drought and water, resi water, water uh, resilient dry farm tomatoes. Don't get me started. I could talk for hours about dry farm tomatoes, how great they are. And, um, he's just such a great guy. All of these people are amazing. This is another one. It was a it's land-based training down in Monterey County for for people who are formerly um, farm workers who they train to be farm owners, and then this became the square, and then that became the mural. There's another one. This is my assistant on a on another farm 
I love this picture of her like and it was fun to bring Jess her name's Jess um, out to the farm and you know she's uh, very urban had never really been on a farm before so we have we had a good time but anyway so she took this picture of me working and then this was the vertical that was able to be put into a square and then was able to hold the type in places that there was enough negative space for the type. Would love to talk to you it's, all it's more fantastic. about her. I love her. What's that? It's just fantastic, Anne. And I think what's so amazing is how much information, even though this is relatively simple, it's not too busy. There's so much information here, not only from the photograph and what you're capturing in terms of emotion and personality, um, but the type and that every person is identified with their farm. So someone can go away and go research Full Belly Farm or wh whoever, whichever one it is and um, find out more about them. Um, and really there's, there's a, anyway, you can keep going, but there, it's fantastic. This is wonderful to see. Well, I mean, as designers, yeah, like, like being able to, to, to illustrate the the information is is what you do yeah. and yeah. and 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 the dominance and you know you all i'm sure all of you are experts at doing this i will also say since you mentioned that josie about the type i also worked with my collaborator at quesa who's the um, marcom person there is a fantastic writer and um you know I'll, there'll be a picture of her later but she really was a part of this uh, it, nuts and bolts and everything and it was really wonderful to have a partnership where she and I talked about photographs like you know with me kind of at the you know the expert on that the wheelhouse and then we would also talk about her writing and that was her wheelhouse but like collaboration is like I'm very passionate about collaboration and um, how we can inform each other is in terms of, of artists and whether you're a visual artist or whether you're a designer artist, how do the wheelhouses come together in Venn diagrams, you know, I see these Venn diagrams and in my mind, that's what you really want to look for when you, when you're working on personal vision stuff is who is, who's on your team, who are you working with and how do your, how do your Venn diagrams like connect and how do you enhance each other's work? This was. Yeah, go ahead. You know, I was going to say, and I can imagine that there was a constant refinement of the text, yeah. constant, constant, which is something yeah. um, we are going to be, you know, working on. But um, that's a process, mm -hmm. a design process in and of itself. Right, um, like less is more in like line. Editing line down your images. Yeah. Is, so anyway, continue. Yep. <laughs> totally, totally. And I'll just say I love the little lammy's ears like sticking out at like yeah. the right angles like there's this there's um this french what semiotic uh, roland barth semiologist roland barth's and he talks about the punctum as being the place that pierces your eye and it kind of draws you in and for me the punctum on this is the lamb's ears like i just love that those because little... it intersects with the um yeah. with the shovel handle yeah creating the punctum that's fantastic yeah. yeah 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 and and the and the dance of taking a photograph is like uh, anticipating those punctums and or being surprised by them if you don't anticipate them and that little lamb when he turned like that towards his little his his big mama i was like ah i kind of felt it so that's that that's that one i'll show you a couple more of the of the backgrounds was these crazy guys that do food waste recovery from the farmers market they do food runners and they were just insanely busy and they wouldn't stop for my camera. I had to go there like, okay, once, and I went twice and I still didn't get my square that I wanted. I went a third time and the little kid is like in the, in the little pirate suit. So there's no way that's gonna be a Fiona mural for 10 years, even though it's super cute. And then finally went back and they had all, they had the right amount of food and it was a great cloudy day. And then that became, that became the square. And then that became about, you know, food waste. So the process of that was, was really fun collaboratively too. So not zero waste. And then this is this woman who um, grows crickets for, um, she's from Mexico and, and it's very traditional to eat crickets 
in many, many, 80% of the world eats, eats insects for protein, very great source of protein. This was, the, this, was the, this was the mural that I wanted to see up. I just love this picture, but they didn't really want to go with something. I personally love this one, but this is the one that we went with, and then the square, and then it's a little more um, of a beauty shot of the, of the owner, but I still, I still have to say I like the one that's more for like okay. the kids, but this is great. You, you have to kind of compromise at some point and always, yeah. always. Yeah. When you're working collaboratively and this is a um, Swanton Berry farm. I think this might be one of the last ones. Uh, might be a couple more um, showing worker, worker, um, honoring workers, honoring labor. And I thought it was going to be like more hands, like hands, the hands of the worker. And then I thought I was done. And then all of a sudden I see this, I forget, honestly, I, now I can't remember his name. I think it's on the actual thing, but you know, and he was just standing there with this hat and I was like, oh my gosh, I said, can I take your picture? You know, he said, yes. And that became, yeah, Martin, that's his name. Mm -hmm. And that became to, uh, the honoring labor mural. And um, I love that one. And it's, and it's, and the, it's interesting that that's what came up and that having, leaving things open like there's the Sister Coretta Kent or the John Cage additions to the Sister Coretta Kent rules which is leaving things open for x the x factor and you know the hands is is a little bit more I would say cliche you know right, cliche right. about the work and that the, you were open to the x factor in this you got this fantastic, fantastic right. image right that openness that like you know not not knowing what the you, end you is weren't like. fixed on this being it no right right you you prepare and then you forget it all you prepare mm -hmm. and then you forget it this is the cover shot or the what i call the cover shot but it was the the um very first panel was just we weren't sure what we were going to do but it ended up being like a like a swirl of fruit i did like three different versions for the i actually really like this one and then I also really like this one where we had a hand coming in. The discussion was, do we want a hand in? Because all of the rest of the imagery has people in it. Let's add right. a, a human element to this. But we needed room for type. And so they decided to go with something that was just a beauty shot of abundance of food. And you know, I, I think either way could have worked, honestly. That's and what what's really interesting to me, though, is that this takes you into the color palette, right? That right. That, that then flows through um, all of the panels. It really well. That's that's such a great comment because one of the things that that when we were doing this again, we didn't we didn't pre visualize like this rainbow. I mean, it, at one point, I remember it was towards the end when it was, it was kind of, you were getting them done. Like these are six of the yeah. 15 because they didn't all happen at once, but they all were completed event, you know, kind of at once, but you would kind of get a few done and then you'd kind of maybe do more and then go back and change this stuff. And it was, it was very fluid kind of process. And, and then at one point, like we just kind of saw that they could be aligned in a rainbow and it was like oh my god are we making a rainbow are we making a <laughs> spectrum and it was like and and there was some discussion like we should break it up and not have it be so like obvious and then it was like my point of view was that it was really great for the little kids that were going to come in it had this inner like logic to it that was a spectrum that I thought really worked really well and also one of the things that Christy and I talked about at the beginning Christy really wanted something that was like a through line like we were going to maybe do a swoosh of, of 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 vegetables all the way across the entire 15 panels you know she she was playing mm -hmm. around with or maybe we're going to you know she had a bunch of ideas for how to tie everything together Right, as, a, as kind of an architectural, almost an architectural element, because it you really it is a very you're in a very architectural space. Right, and then yeah. it ended up being the the color palette is this, color progression is what really tied it together. Yeah. Um, and then this yeah. it, 
then this is like, um, just to show you the scale of them, this was like the installation, which was so incredible. There's the old one in the back that they were, they took off and then the new ones that they were, that they were putting up and, uh, the, the, the guys, the crew did a really great job. They were super fun to hang out with and they loved it. They were just like bowled over. They, they couldn't, but they, they, we all had a really good time. They did a great job of installing these panels. These panels um, move, they're like movable. They have a kitchen behind this. So they, they do storage behind it and they, so it's a utilized space architecturally. Yeah. And were they printed in San Francisco? They were, and I don't know exactly. They're on a vinyl that then they all coated with an anti-graffiti coating that they have been tagged a, a little bit, not too much, but they are able to just, um, with rubbing alcohol, wipe off the uh, spray paint. And it, they told me one of them got, and I looked at it and I could not, I couldn't see any damage that had been done. Mm -hmm. So it, the coating did a really, it does work. work. So yeah. Um, this is Christy and me, and this is from my Instagram. Um, and it was like the first time she had seen them and she was just like, she was dying, like how big they, she hadn't, hadn't seen them at all. It was the first time she'd seen them. So she was super excited and we had like a really nice bunch of different events. And this is one where a lot of the subjects were there and they, they had fun with it. And this is Jude. And this is you, Josie. I think that's you. Oh, know. yes. I'm taking the picture. It was a wonderful event. Yeah. That was really fun. And there's my, you know, Judith in the flesh and Judith on the wall. And it was, it was just a really a lot of, um, a lot of greatness. I wanted to like show you the collaborators. Um, mm -hmm. Some of these people are subjects in the murals and some are funders, which for nonprofit work is really important. So the woman in the camel coat that's next to me, I'm leaning into her. That's Natalie, the junior designer. She did, I was, did the bulk of the design, the really heavy lifting thing. And then the woman in the, in the golden shirt, that's Bree. She's the Marcom, Mar Marketing and, and Communications Director at the nonprofit. And she did the writing. So this is one of my assistants. And I just couldn't do any of this work without in the field assistance, you know. One of my other Jessicas, I had, a, I had two Jessicas that helped me. And these are some selfies that we had to take. Just if you can't have fun doing what you're doing, there's no reason to do it. And I value joy and, and fun in the field. And at the end of every shoot, we would do like a selfie with everybody. And it was really fun. This is something I'm doing now that's like mm -hmm. um, I'm doing little Zoom videos with, the, with different folks that are on the murals to see how they're doing now with COVID. So this, the project still has legs. Interesting. And I hope you all get to go, you know, just that's where you go, go down there and, and it's on. And I also will point out that the website, uh, the food yeah. chain has quite a lot of information and I'll, I'll make sure that this is posted um, for the class because you can go, uh, there's, there's a way to go deeper. Uh, this, is, this is kind of the signature imagery that then is, used on the website and has various more educational kind of um, routes that you can go go down into. Yeah, so these are all of them. So now it's interesting to see the progression of color. Yeah. And I mean, it does make me think about um, that having done all this very meticulous work, then being able to step back and say, oh, yes, there it is um, good to have this almost subliminal connection through space uh, that you might not notice that the colors are, are kind of migrating, but, but you feel it. And um, so there's a coherence to the space as a whole, which is very, um, uh, you know, just a, that there's, there's all these considerations of the micro view and the macro view. Yeah, I like the way you put that, you know, e even if you're kind of sheepishly like, oh, like, a, like, is this a rainbow? You know, what are we doing? <laughs> but um, it, it worked, I think, in that, like you say. It Simple leads, and powerful. It leads you through the space. And I mean, I just wanted to leave, this is one of my favorite quotes. And I, when I write grants, I often put this quote in my, in my artist statement because it, it kind of resonates with me. And it's like, vocation is the place where our deep gladness meets the world's deep need. And it's like, for me, what's important is like, it sounds so corny to be of service, but like, 
that's what's important to me is to have some impact in the world and now more than ever and that if it's like bringing our talent to the world is is so important right now there are there's so many deep needs and and to and to do something that you're really that makes you also joyful and happy and that your deep gladness it's it's it it it's a it's i don't know it's like the yellow brick road or something i mean it's like it's a it's a track, you know, that I would encourage you to like investigate as well. I, I love young designers. Hearing, yeah, talk about your work because that that deep um, sense of vocation, as you describe here, is really it it comes through. Not it's not it's not um, um, you know blasted at us, but it's what makes the work so powerful, and that's um, something we all are trying to hone over a lifetime, but um, I just really appreciate seeing this body of work, Anne, because um, you do have this in incredible sense of responsibility, but also you bring the joy to your work. You, you love what you do and um, you've, you, and, and I also, what I also appreciate about you, Anne, is that um, I'm always, Kind of encountering you when you're editing you're editing whether it's either your website or some work that you did for me and that constant constant sifting and it's like how a writer i just had to write a a, a new um artist statement and i had to get a previous artist statement down to a hundred words for a previous so it was just oh can these two words be one word can i just take that out because i've said it over here and you're doing that constantly when you're editing imagery. And so that is a process in and of itself, um, sequencing um, uh, image refinement, uh, storytelling by taking things away as opposed to putting them in is something that I know you are, you do, 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 and that you can see that that crystallized form of it in this work and in your website and so. Group for group for redundancy and edit for impact is one of my catch catch phrases. And then the other thing is like um, play with with scale, play with space, play with you know large, medium, small, you know telescopic, wide, you know cinematic. So I would also say you know use some cinematic techniques for for editing. That's really important too to keep keep it moving. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, Anne, um, this is making me want to go back down to the Ferry Building again. I have seen it quite a number of times. Um, it's really fun to see that project when the farmer's market is in action um, because there's just so much play between the activity and the color. And so I just want to say thank you again. It's a fantastic project. Your work is very inspiring. And um, maybe we'll do, you know, like, um, episode two when we have another good project that we want to talk about.